Okay. Glucose, exogenous glucose, carbohydrates taken in in the diet. With the exception of fructose, fruit sugar, every form of glucose of carbohydrate that you consume in your diet, if you do consume carbohydrates, irrespective of what it is, metabolically it's identical because it all breaks down to the exact same thing and that is glucose. So to say good carbs, bad carbs, nonsense. It's like saying good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, nonsense. Mm. It is the exact same molecule that is produced by your body when you break down those carbohydrates ready for usage and transport in your bloodstream. It's glucose. Okay. Your body, the human body, has evolved according to positive and negative selection pressures over it seems like probably the last four and one half million years and absolutely definitely over the last 350,000, whereby our behavior, what we have done, how we have fed ourselves, is that we have eaten basically to all intents and purposes, no carbohydrates. Mm. Our diet was entirely made up of the flesh and fat of mostly large ruminant animals for the vast majority of the last 350,000 years at least, and probably four and a half million. That's what the anthropology tells us, the stable isotope testing of collagen derived from long bones of skeletal remains of humans found anywhere on the planet whatsoever of any age up to about 350,000 years old, which is when the earliest human remains have ever been found. Before that, we were proto-humans, different species that were nearly human, but not quite. Mm. So as such, those are the genes selected for. Those are how our organ systems are designed, and comparative anatomy and physiology backs this up. To anyone that understands comparative anatomy and physiology in the light of Darwinian evolution, and it all is in line, it all says that is what the human beings, that's what our diet was. As such, we have a metabolic pathway which allows us to produce glucose from non-glucose precursor. Mostly that precursor is the glycerol backbones of triacylglycerol molecules, fat. There is a second possible source that we can produce glucose from if there's no fat to speak of available, and that is from one or two amino acids, proteins, which can be used to make sugar in an emergency situation and only in an emergency to speak of, or unless you are consuming vastly too much protein, then some of it will go that way. That's the other option. Yeah. Also, we can make sugar from lactate, which is produced when muscle cells do their thing to produce force when we're exercising or yeah. hunting or moving really at all or being alive pretty much so we can make all the glucose we need all of it ourselves why have we evolved that way because for most of the last three hundred and fifty thousand years there weren't plants to be had they were all covered pretty much under a layer of ice several miles thick over almost the entirety of the planet those plants that were available were largely almost entirely fibrous tubers and rooty type things that we had to dig up and boil for hours and hours to break down those fibers enough that we could put them in our guts. And a few bacteria that lived there were able to break down some of that material and produce a very small amount of, as it turns out, short chain fatty acids, not glucose. They had no glucose in them to speak of. The, the <coughs> potatoes and sweet potatoes and those kind of things that you can buy today from the supermarket or the green grocer or whatever. They're actually human inventions. They are selectively bred to be full of carbohydrates. This is all agrarian revolution since the agrarian revolution stuff. So it's really only been about the last 10,000 years that we've, we've eaten any amount of carbohydrate at all. And it's been absolutely disastrous. It's the second worst thing human beings ever did in terms of diet is to add plants in. 
mostly because plants are what full the, of toxins. What's the first? The first one was adding seed oils, industrial seed oil. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that was the, absolutely the worst thing we ever did, nutrition-wise. The second worst was adding carbohydrates. So that's that's the situation on that. Carbohydrates taken in exogenously, we have the capacity to break carbohydrates into glucose because there's no negative selection pressure or was no negative selection pressure to knock that gene out. Mm. Because there weren't so, carbohydrates so the to be had. The, the proto-humans that you were talking about were more herbivorous, they more ingested carbohydrates that's probably why we still have the amylase yeah you, you, you have to go saliva. back about you have to go back about five million years to find a herbivorous proto-human that lived in trees ate leaves and fruits when they were available for a couple of weeks during the year pretty much as soon as mm, we came down so from the trees about five million years ago we stood upright said oh look at these tasty looking beasties let's go and eat those and that's what we went and did from that point, pretty much. So over the next 500,000 years, we switched entirely from a plant-based diet to an animal-based diet. It was also during that, the thing that actually caused us to come down from the trees really and start hunting animals was necessity. The planet froze over. Mm. All the trees died. Pretty much all the and grasses so and yeah, all of that. So that, that switch in diet predominantly is probably what drove that branch off evolutionarily from the proto-human to what we're now calling homo sapiens, hey? Yes, like that, and you dropped the that, probably. That's a pretty, it's, it's, it's an absolute slam dunk. That is what it's happened. unequivocal. Yeah, it's unequivocal. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So from that point on, we were committed to a pathway of animal nutrition, and that's hmm. how we have lived right up until 10,000 years ago when we thought, oh, it's currently warm, grasses are growing well, this hunting lark's getting a bit old, let's plant a bunch of grasses, eat their seeds, maybe domesticate some animals, get them to plough the fields for us. While we're at it, let's live on their lactations, because that's yummy stuff, it's got sugar in it, so it must be great. Um, yeah, this will be no problem, this will be the best thing we ever did. No, second worst thing we ever did. The exact mm. dietary requirement in a human being for glucose carbohydrate is none not one gram ever that is an unequivocal fact no human being requires carbohydrate to live at all any amount of carbohydrate um, and i'm talking about those carbs that break down to glucose directly there is one form of carbohydrate which i mentioned before fructose fruit sugar which doesn't mm -hmm. break down to glucose so much that one is dealt with differently by the liver. It's, it's metabolized directly to fat. And that's even worse. Number one, because mm. it leads to fatty liver if you take too much fructose in. And number two, it raises your trace or glycerol level in your blood, your fat in your blood, and that's not a good thing. Plus, it also causes seven to ten times as much damage to your tissues as pure glucose mm. does. Glucose is actually. Can we talk toxic. about? Yeah, can we can we talk about how glucose causes tissue damage a little bit? Like yes. dive a little bit more into the physiology of that because that's something sure. that I yep. still have a hard time explaining to people. And so maybe if I hear you and then I can kind of translate it into layman terms in my own Go mind. Well, I'll, I'll give it to you I'll in layman's to... terms. I'll boil it down to its lowest common denominator. It's it's quite simple. Sugar, when its concentration rises in the blood and in the cell fluids above. A physiologically indicated level that glucose starts to chemically bind to protein structures to cell structures to organelles to fats to other bits and bobs that need to be a certain kind of chemical to do their job effectively in the human body and it chemically alters those things to something different it becomes a protein plus this sugar side chain that's been appended to it mm. And it's that which causes the destruction of the um, proteins and cell structures and fats and things in, in the human body, which leads to chronic systemic inflammation, systemic failure of your health, robustitude, your longevity. It, it'll kill you, basically. Mm. And that that's a, that's glycation? Is that what that process yeah, it's is? it's called glycation, exactly. 
Mm. And what I'm suggesting to you about fructose is that it's seven to ten times more likely to cause glycative damage to your tissues than pure glucose is. Hmm. So to say fructose so all this, is great uh, fruit this sugar, yeah. fruit sugar and honey. Yeah. That's uh that's that's probably a no go. It's absolute again, take the word probably out. It is absolutely <laughs> <Right>. unequivocally <laughs> Unequivocally. Yes. 